In the Marvel Universe, where heroes and villains are constantly waging war against each other, there's a quirky crew that often gets overlooked. The Brood. They're kinda like the distant comic book cousins of Xenomorphs, and boy do they know how to stir up trouble. With more teeth than a comb, the Brood have a way of popping up when you least expect it. Their cryptic origins and inscrutable motives form a nexus of uncertainty, casting an air of intrigue that stretches across the universe. So hold on to your helmets and prepare for a crash course on the marvelously mysterious and mischievous brood. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. Thank you, let's begin. Who are the brood? What do they look like? The Brood, a powerful and chilling presence within the Marvel Universe, are an extraterrestrial species that embodies a unique fusion of horror and suspense. These mystifying creatures are characterized by their insectoid physiology and a complex social structure that revolves around reproduction, conquest, and domination. Physically, the Brood are a nightmarish amalgamation of insect and alien traits. They boast chitinous exoskeletons, multiple limbs, and an array of sharp, serrated appendages. Their eyes gleam with an unsettling intelligence, reflecting their instinctual drive for survival and expansion. Remarkably adaptive, the Brood can display various forms based on their role within the hierarchy, ranging from foot soldiers to powerful leaders. Hmm, they almost sound a little bit like Homo sapiens. The Brood exhibit distinct castes, each serving a specific function in their society. At the lowest tier are the Brood drones, worker insects that tend to their hive's needs. Above them are the Brood warriors, formidable fighters that serve as the vanguard in their interstellar conquests. The Brood queen, the most influential the influential cast is a grotesque and powerful figure, responsible for laying eggs that perpetuate the species and carrying the collective memories of their race. The actual origins of the Brood are still unknown, as they are concealed in mystery. They may have been produced by a celestial force known as the First Firmament, which represents chaos and entropy and is said to have generated them to disseminate disorder throughout the universe. Others propose that they may have organically developed at the furthest regions of space, adjusting to their hostile astrophysical surroundings. Some suggest that they were the original residents of nowhere. Driven by an insatiable hunger for expansion, the Brood's modus operandi revolves around infestation and domination. They infiltrate and conquer planets, infecting the native species with their parasitic embryos. Once infected, the host being transforms into Brood themselves, becoming subservient to the hive mind and furthering the species' sinister goals. Are they more dangerous than Xenomorphs? While both species are nightmares in their own right, the Brood's combination of intelligence, adaptability, and sheer numbers tips the scale in their favor in a hypothetical showdown between them and the Xenomorphs. Why do we think so? Well, for starters, the Brood exhibit a multi-tiered social structure with various castes, each possessing unique strengths. The hierarchy gives them an edge in strategic planning and resource utilization. The Xenomorphs, while terrifyingly lethal, lack the same degree of hierarchical organization potentially leading to chaos and discord in a direct confrontation. On top of that, the Brood Queen carries the collective memories of her species, kind of like the Q from Star Trek, providing a strategic advantage and accumulated knowledge. This hive mind ensures coordinated actions and efficient decision making. In contrast, the Xenomorphs operate primarily on instinct, lacking the complex cognitive abilities and tactical coordination displayed by the Brood. The Brood can adapt and evolve at a rapid pace, responding to various threats and challenges. Their ability to modify their forms and tactics make them unpredictable foes. The Xenomorphs are known for their brutal efficiency, but their adaptability primarily involves evolving through different stages rather than dynamically shifting strategies. The Brood's primary goal is to infest and dominate entire planets. Their drive is much more than that of Xenomorphs. Their parasitic reproductive methods allow them to exponentially increase their numbers, overwhelming opposition with sheer force. Xenomorphs, although really powerful, reproduce through the infection of hosts on a small smaller scale, limiting their ability to quickly amass overwhelming numbers. The Brood have a long history in the Marvel mythology, which suggests that they have power and influence that extend beyond the boundaries of our planet. This global link suggests they may have access to cutting-edge technology, alien friends, and cosmic energy that may improve their talents. While both species evoke visceral fear and fascination, the Brood's cosmic origins and enhanced capabilities would likely result in their prevailing in a direct confrontation, solidifying their position as one of the Marvel Marvel Universe's most insane villains. The Brood can amplify the fear of their enemy. 
The Brood also happen to be masters of psychological terror, possessing a unique ability to amplify the fear of their enemies to unprecedented levels. Their innate capacity to tap into the deepest recesses of the mind and exploit primal fears is a weapon as potent as any physical arsenal. Through their hive mind and collective memory, the Brood can extract and manifest the most profound fears of their rivals. This unsettling invasion of the mind leaves victims vulnerable and disoriented, eroding their capacity for rational thought and strategic action. The Brood's terrifying appearance, with their nightmarish insectoid features, further intensifies the fear they instill. The Brood can manipulate these fears in real time, adapting their tactics to exploit weaknesses. This mental manipulation amplifies the physical danger they pose, creating a synergy between psychological torment and imminent physical harm. The Brood's insidious strategy ensures that even the bravest heroes are driven to the brink, heightening the tension of battle and increasing the odds of victory for the Brood. I guess they're just really, really scary. They have the slaver virus to make everyone their slaves. The Brood's mastery of psychological manipulation extends to their insidious use of the slaver virus, a weaponized tool that exemplifies their cruel and calculated approach to domination. This viral weapon serves as a mechanism to enslave other species. Upon infection, victims experience a disturbing and agonizing transformation, succumbing to the Brood's will as their autonomy is stripped away. The virus not only subjugates the body, but also erodes the mind turning the victim into zombie-like creatures. Their slaver virus manages to dominate the Akanti as well. The Akanti are enormous whale-like creatures that have a unique relationship with the sentient island known as Krakoa. The Brood target the Akanti due to their peculiar connection with Krakoa and significance. The Brood manage to infect the Akanti with their eggs using their parasitic reproductive cycle. Once infected, the Brood larvae begin to grow within the Akanti, transforming them from majestic cosmic beings into grotesque, twisted versions of themselves. The Brood's control over the Akante gives them access to their immense size and power, allowing the Brood to wield these creatures as weapons and to expand their influence across the universe. In one chilling instance, even the X-Men fell victim to the slaver virus during an iconic uncanny X-Men run. Kitty Pride, a young and beloved member of the team, became a vessel for the virus. Her inner struggle against the virus's influence added an emotional layer to the storyline, highlighting the Brood's psychological cruelty in addition to their physical threat. Superheroes with healing factors can repel egg embryos of the Brood. Well, you must be thinking that the Brood seem to be extremely effective against everything. That might not be the case though. As it turns out, superheroes with potent healing factors possess a unique advantage against the Brood. Characters like Wolverine, Deadpool, and others who exhibit remarkable regenerative abilities can repel the Brood's attempts to implant their egg embryos making them a strong counterforce against the alien menace. Wolverine, with his adamantium lace skeleton and regenerative powers, is one of the most well-known examples. His healing factor enables him to swiftly reject and expel foreign objects from his body, thwarting the Brood's attempts to implant their eggs. This immunity to the Brood's parasitic infestation has allowed Wolverine to withstand encounters that could have led to his transformation into a Brood host. Deadpool, another character gifted with an accelerated healing factor, similarly possesses resistance to the Brood's reproductive efforts. His regenerative abilities prevent the successful implantation of brood embryos, enabling him to fight off the insidious parasites. This immunity adds an extra layer of humor to Deadpool's irreverent persona, as he nonchalantly brushes off the brood's attempts to control him. This doesn't mean we can take the brood lightly, though. Not all superheroes are immune to them. Even the all-powerful Thor has been infected by the brood. Imagine what they would have done on the Earth had the X-Men not been there. Are there any Brood who actually have human emotions? As we can see, the Brood seem to have a tight-knit evil brooderhood, which makes us wonder whether all the Brood are evil, or are they capable of positive emotions? Some members of the Brood are capable of comprehending feelings like empathy, kindness, or honor, as well as being able to work with other creatures. As part of a biological system, this type of Brood is designed to be slaughtered at hatching by the normal Brood. Compassion is regarded by the Brood as a medical disorder. In the Marvel comics, Comics, there is a mutant brood known as Brew, who possesses human-like emotions and a more compassionate nature than the typical brood. Brew first appears in the Wolverine and the X-Men comic series. He stands out as a rare exception within the brood race, and his unique characteristics raise intriguing questions about the nature of identity, individuality, and acceptance within his species. Mutant brood are usually destroyed at birth, but because there were so few of them, the brood queen decided to spare him. Due to his development of human-like emotions and a capacity for empathy, 
traits that set him apart from his kind, he becomes more attached to the X-Men and develops relationships with them, often seeking their approval and striving to balance his nature with his new emotions. During a recent run of X-Men, Beast, Lockheed, and the X-Men headed to a space station to save Abigail Brand as the Brood took control of it. However, Abigail contracted a Brood larva infection during the conflict, giving her access to the hive mind. She discovered that the imbalance in the intergalactic biosphere resulted from the Brood race's near extinction as a result of the destruction of their homeworld. The X-Men then made the decision to devise a strategy to preserve the Brood without putting humanity in peril. They had intended to reprogram the hive mind using No Name as a fresh template, but Brand had informed them of a teenage mutant with No Name who might serve the same function. After being let free, he aided the X-Men in taking down the Brood. How old are the Brood? These dudes are ancient, like unimaginably old. No one really knows when they first started existing. The Brood are ancient beings with a complex history that spans across eons of time and space. They have been in the Milky Way galaxy since at least 2620 BC, making them one of the oldest species in the galaxy. They were experimented on by the Kree and have built nests on hundreds of worlds throughout the galaxy. They are said to have come from another universe and were the first natural predators in this universe. Queens serve as the clan leaders in the Brood society, which is headed by the Empress Brood. Although it appears that some of the Brood were left behind and stuck in the space between universes, the Brood entered the reality of Earth-616 via the dark matter flux of a disintegrating universe. As soon as they came, the Kree Empire abducted them along with other hive species so they could turn them into weapons and use them against other civilizations. They may be employed against the Shi'ar Empire, according to the Supreme Intelligence who supported the plan. To take control of the competing matriarchal hives, they developed the Monarch Gag, a patriarchal component that united the Brood under a single monarch. The Black Judges declared the Brood to be a huge success after 8 million years of testing, and they turned their attention to the Shi'ar. When a vibranium meteor from the Vega system produced rifts in space due to cosmic forces, the Brood were transported to Earth, to the African territory known as Wakanda. The responsibility of defeating these beasts fell to Black Panther, Wakanda's fierce protector. How do the Brood breed more Brood? That is a little bit of a tongue twister, honestly. Moving on, reproduction among the Brood happens in a spooky way, and it seems they prefer to mix their genes with different species. This helps them dominate other ecosystems. We're not sure if they can have babies among themselves, or if they rely entirely on other creatures. There was this one special Brood, No Name, who could get pregnant from different species and have babies, but that's not the usual case. Brood don't usually get pregnant themselves. Instead, they put their embryos into other animals, no matter if they're male, female, or even a completely different race. During this so-called pregnancy time, which is usually just a few days, the baby starts changing the host's DNA. This makes the host more like a brood, but keeps some of their own good qualities. First, the host's mind changes. The baby brood's way of thinking takes over before the body changes much. Sometimes, the host's mind gets almost completely wiped out. People with strong wills might feel like they've changed their beliefs, as opposed to feeling like they're turning into a brood. They remember things from before and make sense of their new ideas instead of just becoming a brood. The pregnancy usually lasts around a week or so, but during a big fight between the X-Men and the brood, longer pregnancies happened. Maybe the X-Men were implanted with special baby brood that took more time to grow, but we're not sure. At first, the host doesn't change much, but when the active phase starts, they transform a lot, especially their eyes and brow. Those always look like brood features. Marvelous Verdict The Brood's ways of existing, rooted in parasitic reproduction and conquest, are a chilling reminder of the harsh realities of survival in the universe. Their ability to infiltrate and manipulate entire civilizations is a testament to their cunning and adaptability. Yet, beneath their terrifying exterior lies a deeper complexity. The concept of a hive mind and distinct castes challenge us to consider the balance between individuality and collective consciousness, while the emergence of characters like Brew raises questions about the potential potential for change, or mutation, even within the most rigid of species. In the end, the Brood serve as a reminder that our universe is huge and complex, filled with both marvels and dread that are incomprehensible to human beings. Their presence highlights the continuing fight for identity, domination, and survival, bringing depth and complexity to the epic conflicts that form the foundations of the Marvel Universe. They teach us that, in the end, literally everyone has their flaws, be it the Brood themselves or our beloved 
beloved superheroes. And with that, I'm sorry folks, but that's it for today. Let us know in the comments section down below what you think about these incredible alien menaces. And be sure to click that like button and subscribe to get the best nerdy content in the future. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, be safe out there, and thanks for watching.